what is going on everybody? I figured I would do a vinyl review. I haven't done a video uh, since the before the New Year. So Happy New Year and I uh, hope everybody is enjoying theirs. So I have uh, to start off a Santana record. I got last month Caravanserai. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, that's his, This is his fourth album and it's amazing. It was such a great record. Progressive rock. Uh, this really showcased his a big turn towards jazz and jazz fusion uh, for for uh, Carlos Santana. And the band is on point, and it's a pretty instrumental record. Uh, only a couple vocal tracks. So, yeah, early 70s. This was only his fourth record, so still pretty early Santana. And uh, just awesome, still very awesome jammy stuff. Just a little bit more into the jazz, jazz fusion uh, direction, which I love. So, uh, next up, uh, we have Win, Lose, or Draw by the Allman Brothers. This is, uh, an important album in their catalog, but definitely one of their least popular, I'd say. Um, and that's mainly because, uh, there was definitely a lot of turmoil within the band between Dickie Betts and Greg Allman. Uh, and just in general, I, I think a lot of the band members would agree that uh, they just weren't feeling the music. And uh, luckily they were able to repair that later in the 70s with Enlightened Rogues. During that record, uh, they said that uh, you know they you know they, they had a much more enjoyable time recording it. So unfortunately this record is kind of a negative memory uh, I guess for the guys for some most of the guys in the band, but it still produced some really good songs. High Falls, which is a Dickie Betts tune, is really awesome, much along the lines of like a Jessica or uh, Pegasus off of Enlightened Rogues a couple years later after this one. Uh, so that's a really cool instrumental. Can't Lose What You Never Had, the album opener. Uh, that's a really good song. So definitely produce some good stuff. Not the best record from the Allman Brothers, but definitely a notable one in their catalog due to, uh, I guess, the lessons they learned and uh, the relationships, you know, that they had to patch up to continue their success. This is an ama another amazing Herbie Hancock record that I got, Secrets, uh, still during the Headhunters period, although starting to come towards the end. Um, this is the album before Sunlight that I showed last time. Uh, and this was, you know, when Herbie Hancock got together with the Headhunters, you had, they released the album Headhunters, they were, then they released Thrust, then they released the album Manchild, and then this was number four for the Headhunters. Uh, as far as what Herbie Hancock number, album, album number this was, I have no idea. Definitely up there. Uh, in the teens or 20s already at this point. But as for the Headhunters, this was basically like their fourth studio album uh, at this point. So, But definitely, you know what? Uh, not all the Headhunters were on this. Uh, Mike Clark was not on this at this point. Uh, but Paul Jackson was still on here. Uh, Wawa Watson had a, was on a lot of the Headhunter records. He's on this. Uh, Benny Maupin is on this, doing all the sax parts and stuff like that. So you still had a good majority of the Headhunters on here, uh, but it just um, it wasn't the full lineup. Because as you know, the Headhunters, um, or as you may not know, the, head the Headhunters formed their own band after uh, the their success with Herbie Hancock. And their stuff is really good, too. In fact, I would love to find... You know, they had a couple albums in the 70s. would love to find a couple of their records. But yeah, Herbie Hancock's Secrets, very funky, jazz fusion, uh, very cool stuff. Uh, the whole album is very funky, good music. Okay, and this was another awesome one that I... I love this album. John Lupani, uh, Enigmatic Ocean. Such a good record. Such a good record. The whole thing... Uh, and it's, you know, it's, it was surprising when I found this guy. He's a violinist. Uh, however, he plays jazz fusion and jam music, uh, and was really in the jazz fusion, jam, psych, uh, psychedelic rock, progressive rock scene. He was into all that. So, uh, he dealt with all those guys, even some of the guys I was mentioning before, Herbie Hancock and that kind of thing. Um, 
Alan Holdsworth is on here. Daryl, uh, you know what? I always forget how to pronounce his name. Daryl Stuermer. Stuermer. I don't know. Stumer. <laughs> uh, but he is uh, a session guitarist with Phil Collins and Genesis. He's on this record as well. Uh, so definitely an all-out mixtures of funk, jazz. Uh, if you've never got into this, John Luke Pawnee, Enigmatic Ocean. Uh, just a phenomenal record. The instrumental parts are insane. The band really is tight on that. While we're, I guess we might as well do my last jazz record I got here. Or jazz-esque. Uh, Miles, Miles Davis, Miles in the Sky. Uh, Herbie Hancock's on this one. Wayne Shorter, Ron Carter, Tony Williams, and George Benson is on a track on this one too. So this, this album has like one of the best lineups you could possibly want on a record and it's not that very well known miles in the sky uh and it's only got i believe yeah four tracks uh my top two favorites are on side one the tracks called stuff and paraphernalia george benson is featured on guitar on paraphernalia and i don't know this was just like um this was kind of his transition uh right before the bitches brew era you know um so uh, it's it's got a really cool sound sorry the sun is kind of getting me here as it's coming around here in the afternoon to my window next up we got uh some more yes albums <laughs> yes it seems like uh it pops up a lot at at uh, vendor sales and stuff for records close to the edge i finally found this i was on the lookout for this one one of my favorite yes albums uh came out right after fragile in the 70s very awesome artwork And, you know, uh, again, this is just, this is one of their best records. I absolutely love this phenomenal progressive rock. Uh, if you've been looking to get into progressive rock, Yes is definitely a band that you got to check out. Then I also picked up uh, Going for the One. It was the other, other album, Yes album I saw there. Uh, this is kind of coming out right out of their 70s period. This was like 1977, I want to say. Uh, so they were they were kind of coming off their peak at that point, if you want to if you want to say that. I love their early 70s and mid 70s material as far as Yes is concerned. Uh, I didn't like their 80s stuff too much. Next up, we got Philip Bailey, a Chinese wall, kind of uh, uh, going towards a different direction genre-wise here. This was like 80s funk pop. Uh, Philip Bailey, if you didn't know, was in uh, Earth, Wind & Fire. He still is in Earth, Wind & Fire. Uh, this, was, this was an album, though, that was produced by Phil Collins. So Phil Collins is actually on this. The song Easy Lover came off of this album, if you know that, if you know that song. Very famous song, very, uh, very catchy, very funky and dancey. Uh, but other good songs on this as well. Uh, Photogenic Memory is great. Uh, Time is a Woman is another great song. Uh, Walking on the Chinese Wall was a big single, and, and Children of the Ghetto was too, two ballads. Uh, but uh, much more of the album is pretty funky, pretty dancey. It was 1984 that this came out. So, you know, some of the synthesizer sounds sound a little aged or whatever you want to call it. But, th I mean, the lineup on this record is phenomenal. You have uh, Nathan East on bass. And uh, Nathan East has been on fire. He just released an album last year. Uh, he was on the new Daft Punk record. And he's been a session bass player for, like, everybody you could possibly imagine. So he's on this. He also co-wrote Easy Lover. He's the third writer on that song as well, if you didn't know that. Uh, Daryl Stuermer, our Daryl guy, is, shows up on this album as well. He was another guy that also was on a lot of sessions stuff but uh played very much uh with phil collins and and Je and was a live guitar player for genesis phil collins on drums and vocals uh and uh i i really i recognize this guy's name paul linho da costa uh a percussionist who's on like every friggin studio record as well so a lot of talented musicians on there definitely check that out philip bailey chinese wall 80s pop funk dance uh type of stuff and i'm a huge earth wind and fire fan so i had to check it out and uh it was pretty good pretty decent 
finally found a Funkadelic record. I've been on the hunt for anything Funkadelic, so uh, not one of my favorite records, but definitely an enjoyable one. Uh, the Electric Spanking of War Babies. This was in 1981. This was like their last studio album, I believe, uh, before they just turned into Parliament Funkadelic. So uh, the song Electric Spanking of War Babies is good. Electro Cuties. This is this is a pretty decent record, uh, but I've been really on the hunt for earlier Funkadelic albums. However, the artwork on this is really cool. Let me open it up here. Lots of stuff you get to look into. I mean, tons of stuff. Very very cool, man. Very very cool. Um, Here's the back. <laughs> Wild Mind of George Clinton, dude. Let me tell you. Uh, so that was really awesome to find that. And then uh, someone else. Oh, there go all my beer bottles. Oh, my God. I got, we, me and my girlfriend had uh, like a drinking session during a snowstorm the other day. We had a blizzard. Uh, well, it was a little uh, underestimated with the snow totals. We uh, only got like 10 inches. But snowstorm the other night, we were in here just listening to albums and getting drunk so i just knocked over all those beer bottles um another uh person who came <clears throat> excuse me out of the p-funk family was roger troutman from zap and this is zap four uh which was definitely a popular record has great songs it doesn't really matter computer love roger troutman was known for the talk box he uh basically is responsible for tupac's california love uh, and he was even featured on the track and in the music videos as well. Uh, so yeah, this is a great, great album. Very funky. Uh, eight, this was in the 80s, 1985. Definitely the first Zap record, which I believe came out in like either 1979, 1980, I want to say. Well, I'm definitely on the hunt for that one. But this was like in perfect condition. It's got nice wrap on it, so I had to grab it. It was only a couple bucks. And I don't think there's that many of them. There are a more beer bottles. Another funk record, which was actually one of my favorites, and I went into a store in Garfield, New Jersey, Platter World, which just closed, and somebody just told me about it, and I can't believe they just told me about it. Because if I knew about it in the last couple of years, I would have totally gone and checked it out. Uh, but they just closed before Christmas, and uh, this was sitting there right as I walked in, and this actually, uh, the Daz Band, I'm not a huge Daz Band fan, but I'm a huge fan of this record, Keep It Live. So I saw this, and I was like, oh, this is a great sign. Uh, some of these other albums I found there as well, uh, but this song has, has the song Let It Whip uh, from the 80s, which you probably know, Shake What You Got. Keep It Live or two other ones that are just so funky. And, I mean, the horn section was always awesome. And uh, another horn section that I got to uh, that I gotta bring up is the Phoenix Horns. Uh, they were on the Philip Bailey album. So uh, they were another great horn section that was around. They were on all, all the Earth, Wind, and Fire albums uh, and all that stuff. Here is another, uh, my last record here, ELO. Um, <laughs> a new world record, Electric Light Orchestra. Look at that, uh, look at that album work. And I all are there. Cool band photo. Anyway, so that's really it, uh, I don't know what else to say. This is a pretty good record. Probably not my favorite from Electric Light Orchestra, but what are you going to do, right? I'm definitely on the hunt for more of them, of course. Uh, Telephone Line, Rockaria, amazing song from Electric Light Orchestra. Jeff Lynn, who also did a lot of work with Tom Petty, uh, is on that record. He produced it, and he obviously is uh, the brains behind most of Electric Light Orchestra's work. So that is all. I'm clocking in at 15 minutes here. I better go. I hope you enjoyed my new vinyl, uh, all the stuff I found over the last month and a half or so. Uh, so I will be back with an update soon. Keep it posted. Happy New Year. Hope you're all enjoying yourselves. And let me know what good music you're picking up.